Hello and welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you on another adventure with me, kind of out into the woods, a good enough way away from the road so it's safe to harvest. Let me bring you a little closer. Look at these beautiful, beautiful flowers, y'all. This is known as the Eastern Redbud. Extremely medicinal tree, a lot of people don't know. This is, the Eastern Redbud is native to Eastern um, United States, from Canada down into Florida, and from the Rocky Mountains East. Oh, people in their mufflers. Now, extremely high in vitamin C. It's your first spring dose of vitamin C. A lot of these are not fully bloomed out. These little buds here, if you catch them like this before they completely bud out, they are a caper substitute. You can pickle them. These are wonderful. Just pick them off. Pick them off and pop them in your mouth. They are completely edible. The inner bark of the tree, not the outer bark, can be made into a tea for coughs, colds, dysentery, and many other wonderful, wonderful medicinal uses. I'll go more into detail when I get back to the shed. Now they can also be dehydrated and added to um, tea mixes, or you can take the beautiful flowers when they're fully flowered out Add them to salads, you can put them in stir fries, you name it. But I have another purpose in mind. I'm going to pick these beautiful babies. I have a quart jar here, and I'm going to pack this jar full because, yes, red bud jelly, y'all. You better believe it. Beautiful beautiful flower you can also they it's also known as the pea tree because after these blooms which unfortunately it won't be making seeds because I'm gonna be picking a lot of the blooms uh, you can eat the pea pods they look like kind of like snow peas when they're young you can eat the pea pods. You can eat them when they have the bigger seeds in them. And it's 25% protein, y'all. That's a lot of protein. So worst case scenario, you can eat them first thing in the spring. Another spring tonic. like I said, if you take these little buds, if you can catch the little buds before they fully open up, you pickle them like capers. All right, well, I'm going to get busy because it's going to take me a while to fill this jar up, but I've got this tree and several more to pick from, and I'll bring you back here in a little bit. Okay, the wind knocked over my camera. But look, as you can see, I harvested responsibly. This tree, I could actually harvest probably three more jars, at least two more. Because look at that, y'all. That's a quart jar cram packed of red bud blossoms. So, now, this is going to make a double batch of jelly. 
regular batch, you need a good packed two cups. And well, I want to make sure we got some jelly for the rest of the year and then some. But look at that. You harvest responsibly. Because I want to make sure that the bees get to eat as well. Alright, I'm going to head back to the shed. Look how beautiful they are. Come on, focus. Let's find some that's fully opened. And you have a very small window of probably about a week, possibly two weeks, that these will be blooming. And I jumped on it because I know you got to hurry. Now, a lot of these on this tree here, see, like right here, that's what you're looking to pickle. If you notice, they're not fully opened yet. That's your caper substitute. All right, time for me to get gone and head back to the shed. See you in a bit. Okay, we are back in the shed, y'all. The shed of many names. Here I have the beautiful red bud flowers. Look at the colors, y'all. Do you know what beautiful jelly this is going to make? Extremely high in vitamin C. Now, yes, this is four cups of very packed red bud flowers. They poof up when they're not packed down. Now, this is going to be a double batch, y'all. So, for every two cups of packed red bud flowers, you're going to need four cups of boiling water, which I'm waiting for the water to come to a boil. Now, what we're going to do is pour the hot water over top of this and you're going to loosely put the lid on it you're not going to crank down because then you're going to seal your jar but just set your lid on top and we're going to let this steep overnight for almost 24 hours you can go as long as 24 hours and then we're going to strain them so now we wait for the water to get hot and what I was trying to say and fight the wind nature and people who think ungodly horrible sounding mufflers are great I come from a time of when you had glass packs and all those actually sound good mufflers these things nowadays sound like upset, well, pissed off weed eaters, let's just say that much, or they just sound horrible, either or. All right, what we're going to do is let it steep for up to 24 hours, at least 12 hours, and we're going to strain it out tomorrow, and that's when we're going to get busy making the jelly. Now, extremely high in vitamin C, your first dose of native plant vitamin C. Now, of course, rose hips are higher in vitamin C, but this is your first wild vitamin C of the year. And eastern red buds are native to America. Native. They grow from Canada down to Florida and from the Rocky Mountains east. Now, of course, there's many cultivars of red bud but you want the wild red bud that's what you're that's what you're looking for now from what i have studied about the red bud many tribes burnt the wood of the red bud because it made the most intense black for their war paint i found that really interesting all right uh now the bark of the tree not the outer bark but the inner bark of the tree extremely high in tannins very good for colds blues uh sore throat 
dysentery. You could make it into a, make a tea out of it and then turn it into a syrup to take for coughs, colds, and so on. You can eat it fresh. Now, it does have a little astringent taste, but it's more like a lemon juice astringent, so it's not that bad at all. They can be ate fresh, sprinkled on your salads. They can be put on sandwiches. They can put on be put in soups, stir fries. Like I said, this is the flowers here with the little tight buds. If you can catch them before they open up, you will look up the recipe for pickling capers. And you got your own capers. Not only can you use the uh, blossom buds of red bud for capers, but you can also use um, nasturtium buds as well. All right, water's ready. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to let the water cool down just a little bit before using it. But yeah, amazing, amazing tree. And like I said, don't harvest all the blooms on it. Harvest responsibly. Leave some for not only making seed pods, but also for the bees to pollinate. They need food this time of year. They have their dandelions, uh, henbet, um, purple dead nettle, and so on, and red buds. But, yeah, an amazing plant. Well, amazing tree. It is a plant as well, but like I said, we're going to let this brew. You can do it on a countertop, uh, somewhere where it's not in sunlight, and it's kind of cool, but not real cool, because this jar is going to be hot. You don't want to put it in the fridge or nothing, because it's going to crack and bust on you. So let's see if we can get a little bit of this water in here. And don't worry, we are going to strain it very well once it's done. get all of your water in and that's for me is eight cups of water hold on a minute let me get me a stir stick I have my old trusty chopstick you want to break those flowers up so that they all get down in the water And no, that's not dirt, y'all. So don't worry about that. Not one bit. It's not bugs. It's part of the flowers. And as they sit, of course, they're going to lose their color. Because... It's going to be infused in the water, and you'll see. You might not think it's in there, but it's in there. And you might have to stir them every so often. And like I said, you have about a week, possibly two weeks. To harvest these and they'll be gone and the reason why I don't want to harvest all of them one the bees do need the flowers and I'm just gonna set that on there like that 
but you don't want to cut your nose off to spite your face. You don't want to collect all the flowers because if you collect all the flowers, you're not going to get the, the, that looks like snow pea pea pods, which, like I said, 25% protein, y'all. That's a lot of protein, especially if you're bugging out and you need food. But I'm going to let this sit overnight. I'm going to make it to almost the 24-hour mark. And then we're going to come back, strain it, and then we're going to get busy making some red bud jelly. I'll see you all here after a while. Okay, everyone, it is time to strain the red bud tea. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I am making a double batch. You will probably be making a single batch. You're going to want four cups of the strained tea. Now, that means two cups of packed red bud flowers and four cups of boiling water and let it steep. I'm going to need eight cups. And there's a good chance that I might not get the complete eight cups. That's okay. I got some uh, uh, purified water over here and making a single batch you'll use enough to mix in with this tea after you've strained it and everything to make four cups look you see that beautiful beautiful color It's almost the color of beauty berry juice. Look at that. Now, what you're going to want to do, because these flowers are going to hold a whole lot of moisture in. And yes, I'm going to double strain it, y'all. Definitely going to double strain it. I'm just trying to catch most... Of all the flowers out of it. I already see some little pieces from the flowers floating in the tea. And you see it's still coming out. You want to make sure you get all of that out of there. All of that wonderful essence. And they will be stubborn. Look at that. And of course, if you have like a wine making press or something like that, you can use that too. I don't have that. But look at that. You want to make sure you get all of that out. You don't want to lose none of that. And I'm telling you, this is highly concentrated.
Now, personally, the spent flowers, they're spent, y'all. All the nutrients and everything is in the tea. Put them in your compost pile is what I would do. Because all their flavor, everything is now in here. And I look at it like this, waste not, want not. But look how beautiful. See that beautiful color? And that's natural. Nothing artificial about it. That's just the red bud flowers and water. That's it. We are now sitting at a hair under six cups. I'm needing the eight cup mark. There we have the eight cup mark. Now, like I said, I'm going to double strain it. I'm going to do that here in just a little bit. I'm going to get my jars out here. I got them all cleaned and ready to go. I got my jelly pot out here. And like I said, this is a double batch, y'all. Look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful color. And as you can see, you can see the little pieces floating. I'm going to use my filterless coffee filters to strain this into the pan I'll be making the jelly in. And then we're going to get busy making some red bud jelly, y'all. All right, I'm going to uh, get my sugar up. Uh, for every four cups, I, I don't go over a double recipe because that gets a little tricky with the pectin but for every four cups of the tea you're going to want one tablespoon of lemon juice now here's my stance if you got fresh lemons use them if you don't bottled lemon juice is fine People been using bottled lemon juice to can with for a long time, and now all of a sudden, it's bad to use. I call bull. Shake it up real good and use it. It works the same as fresh. Now, I prefer fresh, but I don't have it. You're going to need one box of powdered regular pectin for each four cups of the tea. Now the low sugar and all that stuff, I don't use that because, well, I don't know how to measure out the artificial sweetener crap. So, I'm sorry, this is a full throttle jelly recipe. And for every four cups of the tea, I'm going to use about two, two and a half cups of sugar. Yes, I know it sounds like a lot. It is. It's jelly. I rarely make jelly, but there's a few exceptions.
and sugar is a preservative, y'all. Sugar and salt. Just know wh which ones to use. Now, <clears throat> my preference on sugar is pure cane sugar. I use Domino because they're still holding out and they're not GMO. The other, like the generic sugars you use and everything, if it don't say cane sugar, it's sugar beets sugar. And the sad fact is, now most of all your sugar beets that's made into sugar, it's GMO, y'all. Know what you're using. Know what's going into your body and your family. What you're feeding your family. But if you smell the sugar beet sugar, if you have some sugar beet sugar and some cane sugar, you'll notice sugar beet sugar looks like a dust storm when you go to pour it. Sugar cane sugar don't, and it smells like cotton candy. Sugar cane sugar smells amazing, and that's why I use it. Because it's the last holdout before everything goes GMO. Alright, with that being said, I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to go get everything and get it all situated so I can swoop in and do what I need to do and get it done. I'll bring y'all back here in just a little bit. Alrighty, it's time to get busy. I have... Here are my eight cups of red bud tea, strongly infused. Now, this is eight cups. If you make a single batch, you're going to want four cups. And per each batch, you want a tablespoon of lemon juice. Which is a preservative as well, y'all. If you have fresh, use fresh. Use what you have. Stir that in real good. What a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Nothing on the spoon. And now comes the fun part. The second straining. Filterless coffee filter. It will take all little, little bitty stuff out. Just look at that. Is that not gorgeous? And see what all it caught. Yeah, keep that stuff out of your jelly. I'm gonna move that right over there. <coughs> now, before we get started anymore. Make sure your workspace is clean and sanitized. All your uh, utensils you're going to use, your stirring spoon, mine are silicone. They'll be fine in high heat. I have a ladle. I have my canning funnel, bowl of uh, vinegar to wipe the rims. My lids are soaking in hot water. And I have, I'd rather have more than not enough jars out. I have a dozen and hoping that's going to be plenty. Alright. And now. Since I'm making a double batch. Two pouches. Of this powdered gold. They think it is. Pectin. They should be ashamed of themselves. 
There's no reason for it to be that high, but they know they got them. Now, if you wanted to, you don't have to use the pectin. You'd go in and add your sugar and cook it for a while till it starts to gel up. And you want to stir your pectin, add your pectin in slowly so you don't get lumps. Because it is notorious for lumping up. One package. One package of pectin. Ha 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 ha. Two. Two packages of pectin. Ha ha ha. Oh, it's so pretty. It's such a dark, beautiful purple Got a little happy there. Thankfully, no lumps. Alright, yes, I know it's meticulous, but I like to make sure things are done right. Also have, this will be water bath can. I have my water bath canner already heating up. We're fixing to walk over to the stove, and we're going to get to making some jelly, y'all. See y'all here in a bit. Okay, I have my flame on medium. And what we're going to do is bring the tea. I might could have gotten away with look like one box of pectin. You never know. Each year it's different. But we're going to bring this up to a steady boil. You're going to want to watch it. Make sure it doesn't stick. And then we're going to boil it for a minute. The fun has begun. Uh, 
been looking forward to getting to make it this year. I missed out last year. Yeah. Yep. Oh well. At least I know it's going to jail. You don't want to stir too heavy, just gentle. Keep an eye on the bottom. This is why you want a heavy bottom stock pot to make your jelly in. That way the heat distribute, distributes throughout evenly. Good grief. I didn't get enough sleep. I already have my five cups of sugar measured out and once this boils for five minutes for a minute I will bring y'all back once it comes up to a boil I will bring y'all back see you here in a bit all right she's starting to boil and we're going to count it for one minute I have my sugar here in my hand. It's been a minute, and you want to make sure that your sugar is lump-free, and you stir it in slowly. Oh, it smells so good. You want to stir gently, that way the least amount of bubbles in your jelly. Let me tell you, the smell is absolutely amazing. This is where you need to watch it. Make sure that it does not stick or try to burn. I'm going to keep an eye on it and bring this back up to a boil and I'll see you in a bit. Alright, she's up to a good rolling boil and we're going to let it cook for 60 seconds for a minute.
we're going to cut the heat off. You need to be extremely careful. This will burn the daylights out of you. Cut the water back pattern up a little bit. Alright. I'm going to get this moved over to the countertop and we're going to get busy jarring it up. Okay, time to get it jarred up. I have my pot on a good thick pot holder. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't compete in affairs anymore. So, I don't skim the foam, personally. If you want to skim the foam, that is perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt the flavor of the jelly, not whatsoever. And I'm going for a quarter inch headspace. And there we have it. Look at that beautiful color, y'all. Be very careful. This will burn you if it gets on you. But you want to make sure that you wipe that rim. Put your lid on. Put your band on. And there's one. Absolutely beautiful color. And these are same size as a regular jelly jar. They're just wide mouth. Because I happen to get them on clearance. Yes, I found canning jars on clearance, y'all, and I snagged them. Some people might not like the foam, but I don't care. You can eat that just as well as you can the jelly. And I don't do no them itty bitty jars. Yeah, that's a waste of time. And this is all natural color. I didn't add nothing to it, not whatsoever. I'm hoping I'm going to have enough cars. I've got a few more. Water bath counters are going, and it's a ready for them. Look at that. Is that not just absolutely beautiful? Now, for some, if it doesn't gel for you, hey, it's syrup. You can use it for pancakes, on top of ice cream, 
sponge cake would, or angel food cake would be good. Do one more and then I'm going to get the rest of them finished. But you never would have thought that Red Bud would make such a beautiful and delicious jelly. Let me tell you, the smell, the scent is intoxicating. I'll bring you back as soon as I get done. All right. I ended up with 11 full jelly jars and one that almost made it. So I came close to getting 12 jelly jars. Now, I'm going to put these in the water bath canner. It is full rolling bowl. I'm going to hold it by the handles, slowly submerge it in the water, and once it comes back up to boil, I'm going to process them for 10 minutes. And when I'm completely done with all of them, I'll bring y'all back. See you at the wall. All right, they are done. Once you put lower your jars into the water for the water bath canner, you will wait till it comes up to a boil, process them, man, process them for 10 minutes. Cut your uh, heat off. Let them sit in the water for five minutes. Bring them up. Unfortunately, they're all. They're, fortunately, they're all sealed. But you, you miss the beautiful song of Canon when you get to hear them all pop. Beautiful when they're sealing. And now I've got them separated. You don't want them touching. You want a little airflow. And I'm going to let them sit 24 hours. And then I'm going to, you know, double check the lids, make sure they're all sealed, give them a good warm sudsy bath, dry them off, rinse them off, dry them, label them, and put them away. Eleven, well, you might as well say twelve because the other one went into the refrigerator and I think it's already gone. It didn't stand a chance. <laughs> least I got some of it and let me tell you it is so good organic wild foraged homemade red bud flower jelly look at how beautiful that is look at that you see how beautiful that is you can't ask for more beautiful. And you know what? That color is all natural. Nothing added to it. If I can do it, you can do it. You just got to believe in yourself. Like I said, if, if it wouldn't have rained today, I would have went and gathered more buds. 
and pickled up some of them as capers. You can do that if you catch them early enough. Just look for a caper uh, video. For those who don't know what capers are, they're little pickled buds in a salty brine. And if you've ever had the wonderful delight of bagels and lox, real bagels and lox will have capers on them. I love capers. Absolutely do. You can do this. This is another way to stock your pantry. Yeah, it's sweet stuff, but you know what? We're going to need a little bit of sweet because this can always be, you know, used in tea to sweeten it. I wouldn't do coffee. But on campfire biscuits, campfire toast, Oh my gracious, y'all. It's going to be delicious. Y'all, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Remember, you can do this. If I can, you can too. Everyone, take care. Stay safe and sound. You got this. Just stay positive. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. And may you each be blessed. Y'all, take care.